Hello buddy, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at this story about Arc Browser. Now this is a disaster, and I've actually been wanting to make a video about Arc Browser for some time, because I don't really, I, well, the simple answer is I am not a fan, if you got to ask me, but I, 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 there are a lot of things I don't like about it. But first of all, let's get into this absolute train wreck of a vulnerability. I'm going to let you take a guess. How does this work? Now when I first saw it, I thought, okay, this is some sort of JIT or sandbox escape, which is... Bad, but you've heard of it before. But no, it's it's a lot worse than that. So let's let's go see what's happened. So gaining access to anyone's browser without them ever visiting your website. So you do not have to get them to click a malicious link. You do not ever have to interact with the victim. So this person downloads Elk, and the first thing is, okay, why do I need an account? Now I don't like that as well. So What's essentially going on here is they don't have a back end. They're using Google Firebase for everything, which is very bad development practices. Uh, and okay, so there's this feature called easels. And here we figure out how exactly this works. So Firestore, which is a database as a back end service, uh, allows developers to not have a back end and just do everything through Google Firebase, which can also be quite pricey. And here lies the problem. While it is theoretically possible to properly secure Firestore, a lot of people don't do that. So what's happened here? And here uses a really cool technique with a Frida script to actually instru uh, to hook uh, the API calls instead of just using MITM proxy. So you can actually see every time the Firestore API is called and with what it's called. So we'll scroll down. And we'll see what you get. So this weird looking string here, this is the user ID. The preferences, let's just go see user settings, uh, see who referred this user, and then the boosts. And of course, this is where the problem comes in. So boosts are basically user scripts for Alk browser. It's a kind of a cool concept. And then here is creating a boost. And here is where the screw up occurred. So, you cannot query other people's boosts, good, but you can edit other people's boosts. So what that means is if you know someone's ARC ID, which if they've ever shared a boost or easel anywhere, you do know their ID, or if they referred anybody, well, now you can inject code. You can inject JavaScript. This is a nightmare. Now, the only good thing here, the only thing they did right, is if you look back at these IDs, these are UUIDs. These are not ascending. If they were ascending, uh, you could hack every ARC user in one go. But luckily, that didn't happen. So, ARC boosts contain arbitrary JavaScript. They are stored in Firestore. And the browser gets the boosts via the creator ID, and we can change that to any field we want. So, therefore, you could just, you could obtain the user ID, create a malicious boost, update the boost with the creator ID, and whenever they visit it, they will get compromised. This is essentially an XSS in any website you want. You can steal their cookies, steal their money, whatever you want to do. Now, the geniuses at the browser company, which I might add, does not make browsers, they make a wrapper for Chromium, uh, does not do bug bounties. But they did give him $2,000, which I think is good. So, he sends over the proof of concept, uh, they're able to verify it, add it to a Slack channel, and within a day, the vulnerability was patched. That's about the only thing I could say was handled well here, is it didn't take them long, probably because this is a server-side problem, so you could just change the settings in Firestore and that would fix it. So you could also go for privileged pages and potentially then get full remote code execution. And here's the other problem. And I, I'd had doubts about Alk for privacy for a while, but when you visit a site, every site you visit is sent to Fireboost. Firebase, sorry. Now, this to me, for a number of reasons, seems like the most asinine way of getting a user's boosts. Why is it inefficient? Well, Google charges every single time you execute a query. So every single time you go to a page, uh, this is being executed. To see if you have any boosts. As the, he points out, this violates ARC's privacy policy. In addition, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Now to my understanding, by default, Firebase is not retaining those queries, 
so they wouldn't necessarily be able to see all of those queries, but this violates, uh, if we go over to Ankh's privacy policy, Ankh does not know which websites you visit. Uh, actually we do, this one hopefully true, but I might add that Firebase is run by Google, which has its own privacy policy, and a big reason why people use browsers that are not Chrome is because they don't trust Google. Personally, I would trust Google about a million times more than I would trust this company, but that's another trouble with this. And now they've put out a write-up uh, fixing this up, and uh, probably the most important thing here is they are auditing their Firebase and they are getting rid of Firebase, which will also solve the privacy problem. Now, even with Firebase, this just seems like a very strange way of doing it as opposed to simply selecting all of your boosts when you start the program, loading it into memory. Maybe this is for better syncing, but to me it just seems wasteful. And they will also be adding a bug bounty, which is a very good step. I want to let all ALT users know that a vulnerability existed prior to the 25th of August 2024. It was fixed the next day. It allowed remote code execution on users' computers. We patched it immediately and already rolled out a fix. This is the first serious security incident in Ark's lifetime, and we're taking the moment to upgrade everything. And that was the problem. Access logs. Okay, so I think I was, must have been wrong about the previous point. So presumptively, if they can see that, uh, they also probably can see every website you visit. Now they've made some other improvements, so they have fixed that privacy issue. Now this is something that happens a surprising amount of times where companies will create unintentional privacy problems. Uh, we don't log these requests. Uh, okay, they're disabling JavaScript on Sync Boost by default. Okay, that way ideally it would be, even if there was a similar vulnerability, it wouldn't work. And they're also allowing enterprises to block boosts for their entire organization. Yes, getting rid of Firebase is a good idea. Auditing their Firebase ACLs, and there we go. So overall, decent response. Now I'm very, I, I'm skeptical of this project, especially I think I think you can get an idea of sort of the technical thinking when they made the decision that for the Windows version of Elk they were going to use, rather than using uh, either a cross-platform UI, uh, they, they were going to try and port Swift UI to Windows, and that has, from what most people who've used the Windows version have said, hasn't worked very well. So it's really, it's basically stuck as a Mac-only app, which is fine, but I, I just, I, I don't see this company ever working. I mean... Getting people to pay for a browser is difficult, and I, I just think it's probably going to end up... I, I know everyone has a different opinion on free or proprietary software. Generally speaking, I, I mean, I, I use a lot of proprietary software. I use Binary Ninja, I use DaVinci Resolve, I use Photoshop. I don't, I don't have a fundamental issue with it, but a browser is something that I, I consider to be very sensitive, or I would at least want the very core of it to be open source, and ideally the whole thing. Like, Chromium, 99% of it's open source, Firefox, 100%, Brave, 100% open source. For me, it's concerning, not just from a privacy point of view, but just, you, you don't know what it's doing entirely, and there's just a risk that either something was accidentally or maliciously done wrong. This is, this is the interface of Elk. They've, essentially, what they've done is they've, they've changed how you organize the tabs, and they have a uh, some really, really uh, pretentious branding for it, but that's essentially, and, and I think it looks cool. I, I've tried the browser a bit, it's alright. Uh, the performance, not as good, but overall it's a, it's a decent product. Uh, I, I would I would delete that from their page. Yeah, so uh, I assume a ver most of my viewers don't use this because most of my viewers are on Windows or Linux, but uh, if you have tried this, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and also in general, what you think about a paid-for proprietary browser. Is that going to come back, uh, maybe for power users, or is that something that's not going to work out? Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.